I don't know if any of you guys heard, but somebody shot Mr. Burns. And it might not be the person you thought it was. It might also not be this person. Or this person. Or this person. Man, we've done a lot of these videos by now. It's remarkable how I seem to always miss the mark as to who really shot this guy. In this case, figuring out who really shot Mr. Burns is very simple. And by simple, I mean complex and arbitrary. Mr. Burns was shot by the person in Springfield with the most tempestuous relationship with him. The person who most regularly stands against the local billionaire. Sure, they've had their moments of fun together, but by and large, the two of them always seem to be going against one another. And coincidentally, this person is the only one in Springfield to have shot Mr. Burns before this occasion. As Mr. Burns would put it, this person is a creature of pure malevolence. Mr. Burns was actually shot by Bart Simpson. Before we get started with this theory in earnest, I'm going to credit YouTube user Hayden McQueenie for presenting this theory to me. I admit I had considered Bart before, but discarded him because I couldn't quite explain why it would happen this way. But Hayden presented it in such great detail, he kinda won me over. This is more or less an adaptation of his theory, with additions by yours truly. In the Bart Simpson solution, there are four major figures involved, aside from Mr. Burns. They are Bart Simpson himself, Maggie Simpson, Marge Simpson, and Santa's little helper. These are the four Simpsons family members seen after the town hall meeting, and whose stories are most closely linked together. Homer and Lisa kind of go off and do their own thing, while these four are more interconnected. How Bart interacts with all three of these characters is very relevant to this solution. But first, let's consider Bart's backstory with Mr. Burns. Their first major run-in was a quite literal one in Season 2's absurdly titled, Bart Gets Hit By A Car. Then, later that same season, Bart donates his double O negative blood in Blood Feud. In Season 3, they have another run-in at the end of Burns vs. Coffender Craftwork, with Bart stamping on Mr. Burns' foot. Here's where things get interesting. Santa's Little Helper becomes Burns' guard dog at the end of Dog of Death, with Bart rescuing him at the end. Then in Season 5, Bart becomes Burns' heir in another absurdly titled episode. And then in Season 6, Burns attempts to steal Santa's Little Helper's puppies, in which Bart, once again, rescues them. Also, Lisa was there. We'll go into these in more detail as they come up, but especially some of these later episodes get explicitly referenced in the Who Shot Mr. Burns mystery. One of the problems with the Marge and Grandpa solutions, from a narrative standpoint, is that their backstories with Mr. Burns are not actually name-dropped in the episode. One of the key components to creating a good mystery is telegraphing these sort of hidden motives, either directly or indirectly. Obviously in Grandpa's case, his backstory episode hadn't aired yet, it's more of a retroactive connection. But in Marge's case, it's different. If the episode Marge Gets a Job is relevant to the actual Who Shot Mr. Burns solution, then why do they pass her over in the chocolate scene? She gets skipped over completely. Surely it, or the nude painting thing, would have been the moment Burns would have mentioned for her. A Marge solution would come completely out of nowhere to someone who doesn't know their backstory. Here's who Mr. Burns does mention in this scene. First Maggie, who found his precious Bobo. Then Santa's little helper, who Burns remembers as a former guard dog. And then Bart, who was his heir for a brief time. In the official Who Shot Mr. Burns solution, the Maggie reveal is a slight foreshadowing wink to the audience, obliquely referencing his struggle with her over the teddy bear. And it's not a coincidence they revealed Maggie's face first. But to take this one step further, the two images he reveals also happens to be the only two he meets in the parking lot that fateful day. Maggie and Santa's little helper both saw this crime happen. Which naturally begs the question, was Bart present for the shooting as well? We'll leave this here for now, but remember this scene for later. This is our backstory establishing moment. We get our official motive scene for Bart a little later, when Burns' oil destroys Bart's treehouse. This is one of my favorite sequences in part one, just because of how it's shot, with the dripping leaf and Bart slowly lurching back toward the house. 
super dramatic stuff. And you notice, it's Bart, Santa's little helper, Maggie, and Marge in the scene. Bart and Santa's little helper together, with Marge coming over when Maggie signals her. And then we go to the animal hospital, and wait a second, it's the doctor from Dog of Death again. Why is Who Shot Mr. Burns so interested in calling back to Dog of Death all of a sudden? This guy has shown up in like, one other episode. And now he shows up in the same episode after Mr. Burns mentions his old guard dog? Hmm. This is also the scene where Bart vows to get even with whoever did this to his dog, by the way. This scene not only establishes Bart's motive in the mystery, but also references the backstory of Bart, Santa's Little Helper, and Mr. Burns. The two episodes are now, in a sense, linked together. Next we have the Smith & Wesson scene. It opens with the, uh, lamp running away, thereby recalling Bart's motive once again. And then Bart gets to play with Grandpa Smith and Wesson. That is, until Marge takes it away. She tells him she's gonna bury it in the backyard, where little hands can't get to it. Obviously she does this because guns being around children is a huge safety concern, especially since the gun is loaded. But it also indicates, at a macro level, that Marge is worried about Bart being around guns in general. Then it's time for the showdown at City Hall. Bart has everyone look at what happened to his best friend. No, not you, Millhouse. Get out of here. Bart charges at Mr. Burns and is stopped by the old man revealing his gun in his holster. Marge drops off Maggie and Santa's little helper, and then wonders where Homer, Bart, Lisa, and Grandpa are. And then she goes to look for them. Then Mr. Burns arrives in the parking lot. Here's what I think happened. I think something similar happened as in the Marge solution. Bart goes looking for Mr. Burns and sees him in the parking lot, struggling with his baby sister over a piece of candy. Bart steps in, easily rustles the gun away from Mr. Burns, and shoots him. In this scene, Mr. Burns did three things. He struggled with the baby who had previously given him his teddy bear, was witnessed by his former guard dog, and then shot by the child he was grooming to be his heir. Just like the chocolate scenes from earlier foreshadowed. The ending of Rosebud is relevant to the solution. The ending of Dog of Death is relevant to the solution. The ending of Burns' heir is most certainly relevant to the solution. We'll get to that in part two. Bart shot Mr. Burns not only because he was messing with his baby sister, but also to seek revenge for his dog, who Mr. Burns has a repeated history of abusing. It's worth mentioning that this isn't the first time Bart had a big brother instinct over sweets. In season one's Bart the General, when Lisa brings a box of muffins to school, Bart gets into an altercation with Nelson when they're stolen. Bart does have a big brother instinct in him, and will protect his sisters when needed. And as we saw in separate vocations, Bart has handled a firearm before. His history with guns isn't quite as interesting as Marge's, but it's something we can add to the pile. Bart then wipes his fingerprints and throws the gun in the car. The gun can't be seen on him, and it's better that it's not found at the scene of the crime. I theorize that his plan was to bury the gun in the backyard, remembering what his mother suggested earlier. And he either never got a chance, or forgot to do it later. The interesting thing about this solution is that I think Marge knows that Bart did it. Think about it. If you heard a gunshot from the direction of where you left your baby, wouldn't you run back to the car to see if she's okay? We know she did go back to the car to get Maggie for the sundial scene. Maggie is there. We know Marge went back there at some point. And we know Bart is present for the sundial scene as well. The only Simpsons members we see in this scene are Marge and Maggie, who we both knew were present, and Bart, whose whereabouts we know nothing about. Just like in the earlier scene, Marge goes back to Maggie and ends up seeing Bart and Santa's little helper. Marge's worst fears about her son playing with guns have come to fruition. She sees Bart in the parking lot and comes to the conclusion that Bart is the shooter. Think about all of her suspicious behavior in Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 2. We went over a lot of this in the Marge Simpson solution, where her constant paranoia and shifting of blame is covering up for her own guilt. But this is exactly how she would act if she knew one of her own family members did the shooting. Marge constantly has the nervous energy of someone who knows more than she is letting on. Remember the scene in the kitchen. When Lisa suggests that maybe someone planted the gun to frame Dad, Marge goes off on a total tangent. Once again, I quote, No, we can't start thinking that way about our own family members. Suspicion could tear us apart. She goes straight to the conclusion that it was a family member who left the gun in the car. 
Marge went back to the car to get Maggie in part one, and now she is suddenly all nervous and paranoid about a family member planting a gun. If she's talking to Lisa and Grandpa about it, then who else could she really be referencing here? Marge saw Bart put the gun in the car. She's stuck in a place where her husband has been arrested for a crime that her son has committed, and now her daughter is closing in. Marge clearly doesn't want Lisa getting involved in the investigation, but it's not out of self-preservation, it's to protect Lisa's brother. Bart actually plays a pretty small role in part two of Who Shot Mr. Burns. He turns around the dinner scene on Sister Suspect, and then when Marge suggests Lisa figure out the mystery of who put mud in the refrigerator, Bart brings out the quote-unquote chocolate ice cream. It's ironic in this alternative solution that this joke, this silly mystery that Marge pitches as a distraction, Bart also happens to be the perpetrator. I'm sure there's some symbolism in that supposed chocolate ice cream somewhere. Wait a minute. Chocolate. Just like the chocolate box from before. Or the land of chocolate from Burns Verkoffender Craftwork, where Bart stamps on Mr. Burns' foot. What is happening right now? Is this real life? Or do I just need to go to Dairy Queen or something? Anyway, the only thing left is the final showdown at the hospital where Mr. Burns snaps out of it and accuses Maggie. This is definitely the biggest sticking point for the Bart solution, as it would be for any who shot Mr. Burns theory. If Bart shot Mr. Burns and Mr. Burns knew it, then why would he accuse Maggie? Why doesn't he just say Bart did it? The reason is both very simple and very weird. Mr. Burns just happens to really like Bart, and happens to really dig his destructive tendencies. And Bart, for all we know, could still be Mr. Burns' heir. Let's revisit how the Burns' heir episode actually went down. As we all know, Mr. Burns did not actually pick Bart because Bart was nice to him. The whole Mr. Kearns thing failed miserably. No. Bart became Mr. Burns' heir because he started breaking all his windows and destroying his property. He called Bart a creature of pure malevolence. And then when Bart was living with him, he would buy him a car to drive through Santa's village and whatnot. Bart states in the episode that Mr. Burns nurtures his destructive side and that he's suffocating at home. Mr. Burns is legitimately interested in raising Bart as his own son, and it all started when Bart dared to go against him. Mr. Burns mentions his history with Bart in the chocolate scene, and the Who Shot Mr. Burns episode follows the same path. Bart goes against Mr. Burns, this time shooting him, and Mr. Burns walks away from the whole ordeal admiring the kid's spunk. It's also worth noting that when Mr. Burns exits his coma, Homer Simpson is the only thing he's able to say. Obviously a joke related to Homer. But remember, the only reason Bart and Burns had a falling out back then was because Homer showed up and got in the way. Maybe Mr. Burns' subconscious is trying to get Homer out of the picture. Whether or not Bart is still Mr. Burns' heir is up for debate. Burns does say that Bart was his heir for a brief time, and Mr. Burns claimed he was going to disown Bart at the end of the earlier episode. I had always wondered if Burns actually did it though. I have always secretly wondered if Bart is in for a surprise when Burns finally does kick the bucket. Burns has this annoying habit of saying he will enact his vengeance, usually against Homer, but he never actually goes through with anything. We're still waiting for that Sword of Damocles to drop. It's not essential to the solution of this mystery, but is worth speculating on. If Bart is indeed Mr. Burns' heir, it is yet another reason why Burns would want to cover up the crime. Just blame the baby and call the whole thing a wash. It's probably better to just stay away from this whole Homer and Bart thing in general. It keeps getting Mr. Burns in trouble. Oh, and before we wrap things up, it's worth throwing in a little more symbolic nonsense to the pile. I don't like symbolism in theory, but we're on part 5, so why not? I apologize in advance. Number 1. I had mentioned earlier that only one person in Springfield had ever shot Mr. Burns before, and that person is Bart Simpson. We saw him shoot Mr. Burns once already. It was in Lady Bouvier's Lover, and it was a gun full of ketchup and mustard. Silly definitely, but even still, just one season earlier, they show Bart shooting Mr. Burns. Number two, Burns' scheme is to block out the sun. He says, since the beginning of time, man had been yearning to destroy the sun. 
So who should be the one to shoot Mr. Burns? The son. The Simpsons son. Okay, I apologize for that one. Number three. A big deal is made over the 3 p.m. thing in the original solution. All the clocks are pointing to 3 p.m., and Mr. Burns' hands make the same orientation. 3 p.m. is a time associated with Bart Simpson specifically, as that time has appeared in every single chalkboard gag Bart has ever been in. Bart is Mr. 3 p.m. So, to answer his question, yes, this is a clue. And that's pretty much it. Bart Simpson shot Mr. Burns. I think the main strengths of the Bart Simpson solution is that it borrows some of the best elements of the official solution, as well as the Marge alternate theory. You could argue that it's built right on top of the Marge solution, really. It would definitely explain her movements in Part 1, and her suspicious behavior in Part 2. What I like best about the Bart Simpson solution is that it encapsulates a lot of the backstories that is dredged up by Mr. Burns himself. If the episode is establishing that Burns' relationships with the Simpsons is important to the mystery, then what does Rosebud, Dog of Death, and Burns' heir together actually mean? Why were these three specifically chosen? They end up representing the witness, the motive, and the shooter. I admit, probably the weakest part of the solution is the explanation for why Mr. Burns accuses Maggie in the end. It's definitely the biggest logical obstacle for Bart being the perpetrator, but I think it's at least arguable given the pattern established in Burns' heir, that Burns has a soft spot for Bart's destructive streak. If this older episode was never referenced in this mystery, it would be more of a stretch, but since they brought that baggage in, then it's arguable Mr. Burns would do something like that. I don't think this explanation is super great in a real-world setting, but viewed through the general ironic filter that is The Simpsons, I can buy it. Seems like the kind of thing they would pull. I'm not sure how many more alternative solutions are out there at this point. After a while, it gets harder and harder to come up with a reason for why Mr. Burns would cover it up. I know there's one really silly and brain-destroying solution still out there. Like, it is so ridiculous. It's just figuring out the why that's the tricky part. The Bart solution, in the meantime, is an interesting capper for the Bart and Burns dynamic and hits up his relationship with his mom as an added bonus. Really though, we should have all seen this solution coming. That Treehouse of Horror episode basically gave the whole thing away. I mean, everyone knows that Bart is actually the evil twin. <laughs>